hello everyone and uh, welcome to a new video uh, this is the second video in our series uh, firmware and uh, topic is uh, buffer overflow uh, I'm sure many of you have heard the term buffer overflow uh, this is uh, part one uh, because my goal is to show several scenarios uh, in which an attacker could exploit uh, buffer overflow vulnerabilities I'll try in each example to somehow mimic uh, a real life uh, scenario or situation. So for uh, for this video, the scenario is uh, unlocking the uh, the device. What I mean by that is uh, usually in the embedded system uh, world, and they are typically two types of uh, firmware: uh, development firmware and final production firmware. Uh, the main difference is that uh, development firmware includes many features uh, that are removed in the production firmware. Uh, so once the device is ready for the market, uh, all these features are uh, typically removed. One such feature is uh, debugging interfaces, uh, which are disabled or at least they should be disabled on all production uh, devices. Uh, to illustrate this scenario, I have created a simple uh, product firmware uh, called it uh, firmware locked, where the debug interface is disabled and user command are not uh, processed. What I mean by that, let's jump to the terminal here. So if I run it, it asks for a command ID. It tells me device is locked uh, no matter any command I enter uh, always I will get uh, devices locked however uh, there is buffer overflow vulnerability and remember every time you encounter uh, a binary that asks for a user input always supply a very a very long uh, string once I do that here you can see I got segmentation fault which most probably means uh, that there is a uh, buffer overflow so now the task for this video is can we uh, unlock the device can we take advantage of uh, this buffer overflow to unlock uh, the device let's analyze uh, the firmware first I will look at the architecture so I will type a uh, file and of course our uh, binary here it is elf binary 64 bit uh, architecture x86 and the Indianness is Little Indian because of uh, LSP. Uh, little Indian uh, means that uh, the least significant byte is stored uh, first uh, at the lowest uh, memory address. If you are not familiar with that, uh, no worries. I will show in the video how the bytes are stored uh, in the memory. Usually Intel uses uh, Little uh, Indian. For analyzing uh, this uh, binary, uh, I will use uh, GDB with the, our uh, binary. And once inside the GDB, because I want to analyze the main uh, function, I will set up a break uh, point at main, and then I run it. And at the end, I want to get the uh, disassemble uh, code of the main uh, function. So as you can see here, this is the uh, this is a simple code, and this arrow uh, means that the execution is uh, halted here because we have a breakpoint at uh, main. Uh, I was thinking before uh, analyzing the uh, assembly code, maybe it's better to have a look on the C code. And then after that, we make this comparison between the disassembled code and the C code. So I will jump here to our uh, C code. Uh, it is very simple. I have only the main function. Uh, and there are two uh, variables. Locked has a value one. And then we have an array which resemble uh, uh, commands coming from user uh, 32 uh, byte. Here, uh, as you can see, uh, it asks for the user to enter a command, and then scanf is used to store the user uh, input in the uh, CMD array. And here we have our check. If the device is locked, then we get, uh, as you have seen, device is locked. But if it's not, then we will get uh, a shell. 
and uh, as you notice here uh, locked is always the one it's never changed uh, in the code because we are assuming this is a, a production uh, firmware but of course there is buffer overflow because scan if uh, doesn't check the length of the supplied uh, um, letters or char characters from the user so that means if the user enters a really long string that will uh, uh, overflow uh, the buffer uh, here so what is our goal here actually our goal now because we know that if we supplied a really long string the buffer will be overflowed is it possible that when we overflow the buffer we write a value zero here because once we write the uh, value zero here so the device is not locked then we will uh, jump to here and we will get the shell on the system so this is uh, our goal let's uh, now jump to the uh, disassembled uh, code here uh, there are a few uh, concepts i will mention uh, every time you disassemble a function at the beginning and uh, the, these two lines this is called the function prolog uh, it's prepare the stack and the register for this function what happens here is uh, the base pointer is uh, uh, pushed on the, uh, onto the stack and then the current uh, RSB is stored in the uh, base pointer. What that mean? That mean now our RPB is the reference for any variables inside this uh, frame of this function here. Uh, next, we have a sub instruction which uh, subtract 30 hex from the current uh, uh, SP. What that mean? That mean it's allocate a memory for uh, our local variables, and here it's uh, it's allocate forty eight uh, byte for our two uh, local variables. After that, we uh, have a move instruction with move the value one to the location RBB minus uh, four, and that exactly the same as uh, this uh, in the C code locked equal uh, or assign the value one. So what that means, that means the locked uh, variable is at location RPB minus uh, four. And then uh, here we, these two instruction here uh, are together because uh, I want to mention here something called the calling convention. The calling convention, it's uh, determine how parameter are uh, passed to the function. Uh, usually uh, here uh, in our uh, example uh, the first six integer uh, or pointer ar argument uh, to our function are passed in uh, registers in the following order so rdi first then rsi then rdx and to, uh, so forth any additional argument uh, it will be uh, uh, passed on the stack uh, from right to uh, to left so here before calling the print a function uh, the boots actually it's the uh, it's replaced uh, by uh, by the compiler from print of the boots and uh, here this is the edi this is the parameter which passed to the print a function so this is exactly here uh, even we, if you we uh, copy this uh, one and we go to our uh, GDB and we uh, type it here, you will see that at this address we have the value enter uh, command. So this is the exact parameter which is passed to the print of F. After that here we have load effective address. Now it will take the address, not the value, the address at the location RPB minus 30, which is here is the CMD array and it is stored in Rx, then the value at Rx will be stored in RSI, and then the value at this address stored in EDI. So here we use two registers, and the reason is because scanf needs two parameters, the percentage S and uh, the location for the CMD array. So that's why here we prepared uh, the two register before we calling the uh, scanf. Uh, function uh, ax uh, uh, got the value zero it's just preparation ax uh, will contain what is uh, returned from the scan uh, f 
after that here we have the uh, comparison so as you see now we are comparing uh, the uh, RPB minus for the value at this location with zero if you remember here it, that's exactly when we assign the value one here so now, now it is compared with zero that's exactly in the C as if locked here so if it's equal then jump equal it will jump to this address here and uh, at this address what will happen it uh, will print the device is unlocked and then it will call the uh, system and if it's not equal of course it will print uh, the device is unlocked uh, at the end here we have those two uh, lines which is uh, the function epilog which restores uh, the stack and register to the way they were before uh, calling this uh, function so now uh, two important information here is the location of the uh, locked variable and the location of the uh, CMD array because remember we want to flow uh, uh, the buffer CMD and overwrite locked with a value uh, zero okay now let's uh, have a look uh, on the stack uh, as we said before now the execution is uh, halted here so I can uh, look uh, on the stack you just running this command and you see this is here uh, our stack at end with the FDE10 actually I also can see it from here the register uh, window and you can see the RSP the same as the RBB as we explained before uh, now what I will do I will run uh, execute just one instruction so I will jump to the move here let's type next and uh, then again I could change this assemble name now you see we are here exactly and uh, let's uh, see what happened now to RSP uh, maybe uh, 4 is uh, enough so now uh, it's at this location our stack pointer and end with DDE0 uh, and uh, actually if I subtract those it's exactly uh, 30 hex which is uh, 48 I did it here in uh, Python you could see that okay so now we know the location of our uh, stack pointer uh, just to imagine that let's uh, draw the stack I already prepared uh, something here so this is uh, our stack we have the RPB at this address then we have the locked variable uh, don't forget here we are dealing with uh, 64 bits so uh, end is uh, 8 uh, byte here then we have uh, this is kind of alignment uh, usually in Intel uh, they align the stack to the multiple of 16 so that's why here we have an alignment and here we it's our um, CMD array which started at this ad address exactly RBB minus 30 so all of this uh, is our uh, array then we have our alignment then we have the uh, uh, locked variable and at the end uh, there is the uh, RBB uh, which is uh, the reference uh, of the stack frame for this uh, function so what do we need to uh, overwrite uh, everything here until we reach the locked variable so that's mean we need all here AAA alignment BB and then I need 4 CC that would be enough the reason for that is once we supply a string the string usually it's end with the null terminator so that means it will store uh, a zero here let's uh, see that more uh, in action but this is how you can visualize uh, now the uh, stack of our main uh, function um, as I said I will uh, show also about uh, the mm, Indianness uh, to do that I will set the breakpoint uh, after the call for the scanner so after uh, uh, the program received the argument from uh, the user to do that I will do break and uh, then I will set up breakpoint uh, here so now I have uh, two uh, 
breakpoint uh, actually I can't de uh, delete the first one we don't uh, need it uh, now so uh, let's continue the uh, execution uh, con continue and uh, you see it's ask me now enter the command I will enter only just one uh, letter a okay let's hit enter and now let's observe uh, the stack I will run this one where is our a our a is here so uh, a the ASCII for a is 41 just to know why we have uh, 41 here so look where it is stored it is stored here this is the uh, little Indian uh, how it is stored in the memory let's take another example I will uh, run it again uh, run again and now I will enter a B let's see and again I will uh, look at the stack examine the stack we have a here and we have B here so you see how uh, how and uh, the bytes are stored in the stack so it starts here then here and this is continue our third example I will run it again now I will store a a a so four a's and then I will have a B and also let's examine the stack so you see I have a a a a so four a's and look where the B stored the B stored here so that's very important to know how the bytes are stored uh, in the uh, memory okay now we understand uh, how the bytes are stored uh, in the memory let's uh, build uh, our payload uh, as I have shown here uh, this is uh, our stack so we need uh, to fill uh, CMD this is the 32 and then we have here uh, alignment uh, usually this uh, happened that the stack is aligned to multiple of 16 this is for performance issue so that's why the uh, uh, alignment is added here and then we have the locked uh, variable uh, remember here we are dealing with the 64-bit architecture so int is uh, 8 uh, bytes here so if you look uh, here uh, that's exactly what I'm doing so we have 32 of a 8 of B and I will use 4 now only uh, 3 of C this will not overwrite uh, the locked variable but let's look uh, how it's uh, have been on the stack so uh, I will run this one and then I will use uh, now 32 of the stack 32 and let's see you can see here all the A's and then we have the B's here and if you and here the C 43 43 43 and then I have uh, zero this is the nil term uh, terminator is here so if I write one more C 43 will be written here and the zero will goes to our uh, variable the locked so let's do that here I will just modify this to four run it and let's examine the stack again so here everything C and as you see here it is uh, zero so what that's mean that's mean now our uh, payload is ready let's try that outside uh, GDB so what I will do I will just uh, exactly the same I will use Python to print uh, this value then I will uh, run uh, our firmware and once ask me for uh, the input I will provide our payload and now look what's gonna happen what we have here is we have uh, a shell so we managed to uh, overwrite the locked variable with the uh, value zero so that's assuming now we are unlocked our device and our device is ready to receive a command from user maybe this was a, a little bit longer video but there are a lot of information here I hope you enjoyed and uh, learned from this video thank you for watching and I see you in the next video bye bye